Oh, yes. Welcome to another edition of the Mina's House podcast. I am here with family. I feel like she's my family because I know so much about her. And I think you have that energy where when I first talked to you, like we just felt like we knew each other already. Yes. But Philly's own Kenya Vaughn joining us today. What's Woo! going on? What's up? Kenya, you have the best la 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 <laughs> la. You are have the best la la's in the game. I, I, You've been practicing I didn't, la la. See, I didn't want to come and sound all flat. In no, front of you, you hit that. You hit that little <laughs> note just now. I'm like, what's that mean? <laughs> Kenya, thank you for making time for the pod today. I appreciate it. You. you know, of course, I gotta come every time. That's the so best proud of conversation. You. Yes. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. So it's crazy. I interviewed Kenya. Had you just been signed when I talked to you on Sirius I, XM? I think I was like signed for a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah, for like. But like like uh only for like a year, like less than a year, like kinda like close to a year ish and some change. So you dropped overrated, which was like your debut single about a year ago, correct? Yes. So you that what that drop was under the label. Yeah. And then so we were talking about <laughs> summer and at the time we talked summer it was summertime and summer was a big song and you were talking about this E P that is now officially out, the honeymoon phase. Yes. Officially out. So how has that year been for you in anticipating for this drop? It's been like definitely like um just a build up for me. I feel like just knowing what's to come and like constantly hearing people ask like oh when is it gonna come when is, when is it gonna come and happening to, to like hold back a bit and kind of like keep saying soon soon like a lot of my previous interviews like I kind of like watched them back I don't really like watching my back all cre like myself back all crazy because it's just like a thing for me but I recently I'm like all right I just gotta you know watch myself so watching myself back I, I peeped it I s say soon 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 a lot when people ask me like oh, what's the next thing so it's just so you know it feels great to finally be able to now talk about it and be like oh let's get to it let's talk about the you know the finally the project that I've already been anticipating this whole entire time you know so I know from the artist's perspective it's a little frustrating because you feel like you're waiting and that's what happens when you're signed to a label right you have to go on like whatever timeline they have right. but in terms of artist development it's very rare now to see kind of what happened to you where they're putting mm -hmm. out a record they're they're kind of developing you slowly and doing an EP and they're not rushing you into like this exactly. this album I think that's really important in the build-up process and yeah. I feel like that process has been lost a little bit because everybody's like oh we need the TikTok, we need the instant we right. need the thing but your music is soulful R&B and your music is it really touches the heart that's not something that you can microwave right right it's something that you have to build organically right. so I love that you know you were doing all this press and you know you had the 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 song summer that was already spinning on the radio before you even got to this place where you dropped your debut EP Right. So, okay, I want to talk about some of the songs because you're uh, filming yesterday in Philly mm -hmm. and you literally got the piano in the middle of the street. So first of all, <laughs> I want to know how we got the piano in the middle of what? The North Philadelphia, right? Like, Girl, did you shut down the street? Like, how the, did that happen? The street was shut down, but don't <laughs> ask me how. I just pulled up seeing the piano in the middle. Like, okay, this is what we doing. We doing this. Okay, this fire. But yeah, the street was blocked off, but it definitely was like a lot of people like kind of coming out. You know, right. The neighborhood like, like who that going? right can i be in the video yes <laughs> they was though yeah. and you know how philly is especially people are like oh put, put this hat on <laughs> from all night <laughs> Yo, they got it. They got it. But promote my clothing yeah. line. Here's my T-shirt. <laughs> right now, while we filming the video, like just met them today. But no, nah, it's just you know all love. A lot of people is just you know kind of interested because I feel like people shoot videos in Philly, but not as often, especially with you know everything that's going on now, and, you know in Philly. So just being there and kind of seeing like the community interested and kind of knowing who I am it, it felt good to you know just you know be embraced by the you know the streets of Philly you know People I loved it because you had iconic places like Max's in there and yes. I just thought the piano was like next level I'm like <laughs> yeah especially like with the bikes yeah when they got the bikes out there I'm like oh yeah it's definitely Philly out here. <laughs> right right how did it feel coming back to your hood and like as an artist filming 
was was that a moment it definitely was like where you're like wow i've come such a long way like i used to live here and now i'm doing this it definitely was a moment because it's just like you know like i had my family in the video right. too my like my actual if people are wondering like those are my actual siblings like and everything like that. And so, you have six. There's six of y'all, right? I mean, on my, like, wait, I can't even keep up with my dad. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, busy. dad. Yeah, dad but on busy. my dad's side, it's, 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 it's a whole different number. <laughs> but in my immediate family, it's, it's six, it's of, us, six but of us. That right. was my dad's side. You know, they're younger um, than me. And in my immediate family, I'm the youngest. So, I got, you know, I got them in the film because I wanted, if you hear yesterday, if you heard yesterday, I talk about just those times of growing up. So I wanted to kind of highlight those younger years of mine and, you know, maybe other people that they could relate to just how it felt like yesterday, those nostalgic moments for me growing up in Philly and seeing those, you know, this, those playgrounds and we didn't get to highlight it, but really for me, like going to those cookouts, those, you know, real like block parties, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and everything, but just wanted to highlight a, a piece of that, a moment of that, just of those younger years and, you know, how fast it just kind of rips on by. You know? you know, you got me to thinking, and in the song, it says, like, I wouldn't change anything. And right. I want to say, like, you, there's nothing about your, like, nothing that you would change. Because I, when I evaluate my life, I'm like, okay, I should have done this, I should have done that. We always have, like, at least for myself, things that we would do differently. There's nothing about your life that you would do different. <laughs> like, nothing. I mean, like, we all... You know, like you said, we all have those times when we say, ah, oh, I wish we, I, I would have done this. I wish I would have, you know, done that. But, like, I feel like in reality, I would have to say no because, like, um, at the end of the day, those things have, you know, made me who I am. Like, genuinely, every little piece, even if it's just something minor, like, everything in a whole makes a piece of you. It makes mm. you who you are. Those experiences, those mistakes, those everything. Because without a mistake, you wouldn't be like, oh, well, now I know not to do this. Like, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I feel like everything is what makes you you. So I would have to say, no, I wouldn't change it at all. Girl, I got a got list. Me here. <laughs> got me here so far. You know? I got a list. I, listen, when I come back, <laughs> I'm doing this this no. way. I'm doing this. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about the honeymoon phase in general. That phase in a relationship, which mm. is what the project is about, right? Mm. It's about the relationship with yourself, the relationship with your significant other, even yes. the relationship with your family, right? Mm. Like evaluating, this is how I grew up. I feel like the honeymoon phase in general is just like butterflies, which is one of the songs, and mm. it's perfect. It's like the perfect part when of a relationship. When did it hit you like, okay, this is the name of the EP? I feel like that was the thing why I wanted to call it the honeymoon phase because that's what people think of, oh, it's butterflies and sunshine, but I really wanted to dissect it and really get people to thinking that we think everything is, you know, roses and sunshine, but in reality, it really isn't because if you break it down, like when you first start talking to someone, you like them and everything's going good, but then you may go through a time where it's like, oh, this seems too good to be true, so you pull back, you gotta stop talking for a minute, but then it's like, oh, I'm thinking about them, so now you hit, like, it's like a whole roller coaster. Then you actually talk to them, then it's like something happened, first argument, oh, this person's overrated. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. I don't think they're, but then it's like, I don't know, they give me butterflies. Like, you know, it's all in a whole, like, it's a roller coaster. It's not like, it, when you really look at everything as it is, I feel like I wanted to kind of like highlight that love within itself, love with someone else, love with everything. It's all different types of phases you go through. And I, I labeled it the honeymoon phase because of that, you know? I love that because in my opinion, I think the honeymoon phase is overrated, right? Because right. I'm like, I hate right. that phase. I'm like, when I'm like, okay, why isn't this person texting back? Did I do something right. wrong? You're overthinking. I, right. It's like, like a I hate that. I don't, like it. I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? You're thinking like, oh, did, we could be like this. This could be us. <laughs> right. Then you're like, wait, I don't want to do too much. The relationship like, They're going to think I'm crazy. We're already together, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a whole roller coaster. I don't like it. through mentally. So I, I feel like if you listen to the whole project, you, you hear that I touch on so many different of those, like, you know, phases of loving yourself or liking them or feeling like you don't like them and, and you know just 
everything as a whole, you know. I hate it. I like stability. I like knowing you're going to text me back. Right. I like knowing that you're going to return the phone call in a timely manner. Exactly. You know? I, I, I hate the honeymoon phase, but I love how you use that as a way to kind of explain the project. I just think it's perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. I wanted to talk about um, used to, right? Because part of the project is love. And that's that's a lot of what you sing about. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I really started to think about this idea of what old school love is. Like, what does that feel like? Because I feel like some people don't even know what that looks like, what that feels like. We live in an age where literally it's like this person's on TikTok or Instagram right. and they're not responding to my text message or we're not going to hold hands because we're not, you know, like, what does that old school love feel like for for you? Like, Well, old school love... When I think of it, and you know, just the term in, in general, I think of like just this, this a real feeling outside of your phone, like putting your phone down, going outside, and really feeling the breeze, and you know, taking that walk with someone and having conversation. I feel like socially, everyone's been here, like on the phone. You could walk past someone, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like back in the day, that old school love was embracing people, embracing your neighbors, embracing, you know, the ones around you and, and being genuine about it. You know what I'm saying? And overall, like, I feel like it, it is a moral to the story when you heard those old school love type of songs back in the day, too. It was always a storyline. People weren't afraid to be vulnerable mm. and tell you, oh, this person hurt me. I want you back. You Especially men. Exactly. So it's just like, you know, a lot of times now is people are on, oh, I don't need you. I'm, I'm one up. You know, I'm independent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That old school love to me is being able to be vulnerable, being able to really, like, let your guard down and, and show someone you, you mm-hmm. know? So. so what did the K-5 think oh about my- the project? <laughs> She not let the K five go. Okay, we gotta explain what the K five is though. So you, you explain. explain it. You no, explain, no, 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 you explain no. what the K five is. All right. Is. So the K five for those of you who don't know, when I was younger, you know what I'm saying. Like I told y'all, in my immediate family, it's all six of us. But I have an older brother, so you know he was out doing his own thing. But the you know the the rest of us, the five of us, we were like closer in age, so we were all at the crib and we created this you know family group called the K-5, inspired by, you know, the Jackson 5, the J-5. And uh, <laughs> and honestly, I wasn't a singer. I wasn't the lead singer. Y'all may be thinking that. I was like, going to say, I, I didn't want to interrupt you, but she yeah. wasn't Michael yet. I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> unfortunately. She was Tito. Yeah. No, don't. I said yes. Don't. No, no, no. Not Tito. Maybe Jermaine. Jermaine. Okay. That, <laughs> but... Yeah, I was I was uh, the background dancer uh, in the back. My uh, I have a fraternal twin, so my my twin brother he was you know young Mike, but you know I always knew I always knew that it was gonna be me one day, and you know we're, we're here we're here we're stepping in those shoes now. How did the K five respond to your project? They responded like, like we have a family group chat, mm-hmm. so you know we keep them updated, you know, because everyone lives where they live and everything, but. Like, we send them, like, my projects, like, yesterday. Even before I dropped my project, they already knew it was coming. And they family. So, of course, like, I got to send them certain things on the project before it came out. Um, But overall, when it dropped, they were super excited. Like, my mom literally been calling me every day like oh my god i'm in my um my work group chat <laughs> this is the most comments i've ever gotten <laughs> they're loving it kenya so you know everyone's just been really proud overall and i've just been really feeling the love you know i wanted to bring that up because it's an inside joke between you and i the k5 but i also i wanted to talk about your discovery of your voice mm-hmm. because you haven't always been you know you you're from a musical family your family's right. very musical and you kind Kind of honed in on the songwriting aspect right earlier on and that's why your stories are so vivid and your mm. music is so relatable because you have that skill which everybody ain't got right. but how, when did you find your voice and that's why i wanted to bring up the k5 because you had not found it yet because you were inside of this group where other people were had these talents at some point you found your voice and you found kenya vaughn's voice right well i feel like honestly um, the moment when I knew I found my voice or when I knew, like, this is, like, all right, this is my... Like, people 
are saying that I have something different or something unique, like the, the moment I realized it's that, because I knew like I could sing and I was developing something, but the moment I knew it was like, okay, you have something here, was um, when I signed up for this contest, sorry, let me, that, I didn't sign up for it. Someone in the neighborhood signed me up because they heard my, like, m- my music, like my brother had showed them like, yo, my sister, I'm telling you. And it was like an older guy and he knew of this contest. Um, and like at the end you had won like a you know a, a cash prize or something like that and it was originally for someone who passed away and their family was like you know making this organization uh, organization to like gather money and you know also involve the kids and you know get them involved so he had signed me up I heard that like I would have to be performing live now before then I'm singing with the track at open mics I'm scared my mom telling me look you gotta sing just instrumental your voice like <laughs> yes, you know what I'm mom. saying yeah like you, <laughs> we can't keep doing this you know what I'm saying you gotta show them what it is and I would always be be scared and she would push me like maybe you should just you know stick the song right like if you want to be scared you gotta just stick the song right and I'd be like that would be motivation for me because I'm like no not just a songwriter you know what i'm saying so uh like once i also know that he paid for me to get in the the contest i'm like i gotta do it you know so you know we had rehearsals after rehearsals and i heard that it was gonna be 500 max and it was in a a whole auditorium and it was sold out and i'm like oh my god i hope (laughs) i don't bomb this this is my first like just live like just straight vocals and i actually my mom was there practicing with me every day, even at the crib, and I just remember going on stage. Before I went on stage, right, it was, like, majority, I'm, I'm going to say, like, it was a majority, like, white, you know, white contest. Oh, and I was my like, God, that makes it even harder. You know, <laughs> and I was, like, one of the few, you know, you know, black people there. So before I went on stage, it was, like, this, you know, white lady, she was, like, uh, I was the only one dressed different. Everyone was, like, dressed formal, suit and tie. Like, the kids, uh, the, the little girls, like, you know, the dresses. And, the, like, they was going to prom. I'm like, uh, I'm in the wrong place here. I had my little, you mean, the jeans on, the little the jacket slanted to the right. You know, and she was telling me, you, you sure you don't want to, you know, take the jacket off? Or what? All that before I went on stage. So, mind you, this is pressure. This is first time performing. I'm thinking, like, she coming at me. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is making it worse. And I just remember, like, saying, nah, I'm cool. And the one lady was like, don't listen to her. You got it. You go on the stage. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And I remember calling, they called my name on stage, just this shiny spotlight. And I'm like, oh, my. And I just remember killing it overall. It was like a standing ovation. People were clapping and just amazed. And, like, when I came out, it was, like, little kids asking for my autograph. And that's when I knew, like, wow, like, I can really do it. Like, you know, I was so scared, but I really, I did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's when I really knew. But That's an incredible story, girl. Cause your voice is so different. It, what? Oh, and after after that, like I almost forgot this is the highlighted story. She came up, the same lady came up to me and my mom was like, "Yo, this is like more of the story. Don't ever listen to nobody." I I told her to take off the jacket. I was trying to, and she didn't listen to me, and she absolutely killed it. So that just goes to show you don't listen to nobody. Chase your dreams, do you? Wow. And I was just like. And that's when I really, yeah. It, you it made a me. non-believer into a believer. Right. what you did in that moment with your talent. Yeah. By the way, her brother's here. That's who's in the background. <laughs> <laughs> One of her many brothers. <laughs> I'm cranking up. <laughs> Who was not in the K-5. He I was, just, that I was just, the <laughs> one out doing his thing. <laughs> But, man, so, you know, talking about the project, I didn't expect that whole big story. I love that. I love yeah. that that's the moment. Like, you can pinpoint it. Right. So this is the moment I found me, my voice, which is so special. Yeah. So different, so unique. You know, it's, like, old but new, soulful. It, like, it just, man. I, I and then the crazy it. part is, like, I keep waiting for an effect, right? What do you mean? Like, I keep thinking there's an effect on the voice, but then I hear you sing live. I'm like, oh. there's no effect on her voice. You know how now <laughs> they have the mics and they be putting the yeah. effect. And we've seen it, you know, people performing. I'm not gonna call no names out, but they sound crazy. And then later on, they're like, well, the mic wasn't tuned or, you know, you can yeah. put effects on mics now and yeah. then you all sound the same live, but that's not yeah, your no, story. It's just, it's just raw. Yeah raw vocals and most of the time like starting out performing at these like local gigs and these like small venue gigs they don't really have like a a 
a vocal engineer because a lot of those artists use like vocal engineers in the back and tune in their voice as they go and they don't have that so yo if, if you know what i'm saying when i come out it's usually just the mic and the little speakers in the front of the uh the stage and i'm just kind of rocking out to an instrumental mm. but a lot of people do tell me that and i just you know it makes me feel good because i really am my my like my worst critic like a lot of those performances i'll be like dang i could have went harder like i, I feel like i you know because i'm practicing and i'm hitting certain notes away and i'm like i like it this way when, but in reality when you're performing these live and it's in the moment i may not hit it that way or i may hit it a, a different way but you know from the outside looking in everyone is just taking it in like wow this is amazing and i'm just like ah, i could have done this so hearing that feedback like wow you sounded just like the track yeah it's kind of like okay i can you know kind of loosen i can just give myself a pat on the back a little bit i can kind of give myself more grace yes you know? please give yourself grace yeah. even though that perfection is what makes you incredible right Thank that you. need for perfection i have it too and people tell me that all the time like you did great and i'm like i was terrible i right. could have done this better i could have done that better my hair looked a mess right <laughs> <laughs> that's how it be man. right that's how it be <laughs> right i want to talk about halfway because mm. halfway is my favorite song that's and i know you're favorites. promoting other songs but there's something about halfway it just it touches me and I just want to hear it over, and I know that sounds a little like raunchy, but, but, but there's something about halfway. Mm -hmm. It's 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 my vibe. Right. It's my song yes. on your project. Talk to me about the creation of halfway, and I'm known for this. I always pick like a song that nobody's, you know, you guys aren't promoting, and right. you know, I know used to and yesterday are the songs, but halfway it just sings to me. No, Halfway definitely one of my favorite songs. I'm, I'm pushing that too, but, you know, yesterday, definitely close to home. I wanted people to, you know, see more of me, of course, so pushing those too. But Halfway is definitely top one. I feel like I was in L.A. That was like, when I created it, that was the first time I've ever been at, to L.A. And just first time I've ever been to L.A., I was just like, looking at everything amazing like, oh my god oh wow palm tree <laughs> like you know what i'm saying i was just amazed now when i go to la it's just like oh it's la but like, you know? <laughs> it <laughs> no, looks the, just like the pictures yeah everywhere like, oh my god this is gta <laughs> like i swear this is yo this is where franklin was on the block <laughs> i literally was saying that the whole time so it was just so much inspiration so many just like just motivation just out there and going into the studio like each day when this trip i was out there for like a month i would say but each day i was like um with someone new like a different producer a different engineer a different so like it was just like you know i'm moving with the punches so everyone came with their own flavor like a their own beat or their own style like you know what i'm saying so um this beat man uh it the beat is different from what from what i've heard from you yeah they and came i think in. the dimension of the beat with your voice and then the content yes <sighs> Girl. i just love it that's one of the songs i could just like as soon as it's done replay again let's, yes from the top you know like i could just listen to it on and on but th this one in particular like because you know certain projects that be, uh producers would just send the beat and i'd be like oh i like this and i'll go like like that but this trip you know um certain engineers like and um, producers and people like that that i've worked with if i vibe with them it would just be like oh let's just start from scratch let's just do something just like here for the moment off the vibe so he had um uh bring out his guitar and it was like a, someone on the drums he had uh you know did production and we just literally did everything live they was just playing the music and we were just all in there just in the same moment vibing back and forth and i just went in the studio it was just and it was just light from that it was just like it felt different yeah when they were creating it so it was like i have to come different on the song i have to bring something different it felt different and that's just where i was i'm like i'm in la ho like i gotta <laughs> do it like move on don't they say yeah yes. you know? but yeah i love that <laughs> yeah i love that who are these songs about are they about uh, one person, multiple people? Like, where's the inspiration? I mean, like, 
Everybody always got to get personal. This is a personal question. Right. This is a oh, personal okay. question. No. <laughs> you don't have to answer it personally. No, you can be, it's, it's, it's all these different people. <laughs> no, no, no. I, or I, sometimes you can pull from other people's experiences, right? Some Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes it'd be that, and sometimes it'd be my experiences. It could be an experience that I've had or in prior that I'm having now. But overall, like, I feel like I uh, take my experiences, but I also want to make the song relatable to others but i don't mm-hmm. want to get too in depth like yesterday they like you know what i'm saying <laughs> right. little individual stuff so i'm thinking of everyone in the whole like everyone's experience and what we all could possibly be going through at times in our lives when i'm writing these songs overall like it's not really like you're not a pulling up taylor swift no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> maybe like overrated back in them days overrated used to like Maybe in my head, I yeah. thought, like, this is about you. Like, because you're overrated for real. Like, you know, but, yeah, no, nobody in particular. Like, you know? Yeah. I want to talk about some of your Philly collabs. Because, man, Music Soul Child on Summer yes. and both of your voices together literally tingles. Like, hair standing on yes. on my, my arms. That's Music Soul Child. That's, That's both. No, Soul wait a minute. That's you, too. That's both of y'all together. Yes, you're right. You're right. Don't do that. You're right. It, music's going to be music, but the way that you harmonized, mm-hmm. and I don't know who laid the harmony first. I don't know mm-hmm. if music put the harmony and then you, you know, layered it or if you did it, but it's beautiful. Thank you. I just, you know, like, just talking about that, I feel like it, honestly, it still all didn't really hit me yet. Like, you know, certain things they really, when you go and you're accop- accomplishing things, it doesn't really hit you, like, at first. And I feel like those are the, that's one of the things, like, having Music Soul Child on my songs is kind of like, I really grew up listening to him, like, my mom, everybody, my, my whole entire family, like, and I remember trying to, when I was developing, you know, my voice, sing his songs and do this, that, and the third and harmonize. So just looking back at those memories, it's kind of like like wow like you know what i'm saying he knows me now like you know what i'm saying like he's embraced me now posted me and he's on a song of mine like this is insane like you know what i'm saying but it's also how you can live up to his legacy how right. you can match the legacy right you don't have the same time in but in terms of the talent level girl that just the, that harmony at the end just really, really was something different. That harmony at the end was. <laughs> he, yeah, he snapped. I wanted to ask, how did that come about? You know, because um, obviously you guys are both from Philly. Right. Um, but Music Soul Child is not collaborating with, with just anybody from Philly, you know? Right. Um, well, I want to say shout out to Mike, one of my a and uh, um, He's known Music Soul Child for basically since the start of his career so yeah. um he's always asked me like what are some of the artists you know seen yourself being on song with or you know this that and the third and i always to say music soul child or you know jasmine sullivan or you know this when he would ask me like in the philly area or, or something and he kind of just one day like uh, oh i got a surprise for you <laughs> And I'm like, okay, because we've been talking about, yeah, we're going to get a feature for summer. So I knew it was going to, um, and I sent my list of people like, oh, I think this would be great. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got a surprise for you. And he sent it over. And, I, it, 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 and the draft didn't say feature in, uh, music soul child at first. Yeah. So I'm just hearing the song, okay, it's summer. Let's, let's see what it is. And then just hearing him right off the rip, I was just like, wait, is this music soul child? <laughs> oh, yeah, so you know, he like, yes, that's music soul child. I'm like, no way. Send it to my mom she listened <laughs> to it on the phone we on facetime she's sitting there crying on facebook oh my god no and i'm like yeah this is this is this is really crazy like i sent to my dad everybody and it was just in the moment it was just like i, I think that was a great surprise i like surprises so for people that's like oh, why do you? i like surprise i think like that's how i found out though he surprised me so the end is different from the original version yeah. So how did you get to the end? Did he sing and then you... I, I'm wondering how that happened, this beautiful melody, which isn't a part <laughs> of the original. I, I, I honestly, like, I had different drafts of Summer because it's like, if you know, it's so d- many different versions of Summer. Yeah. So the engineer that I work with, he was kind of like, you know, messing around with my little harmonies that I've had and sent a draft over to music and he just did his thing at the end and 
added his own melodies and harmonies and mm. kind of made it all come together for the song. Have you guys met face to face? No, I haven't got that Oh my goodness. Yet. What did you <laughs> say to him when you meet him? Honestly, I really don't know because it just flashed <laughs> in my head. I just froze. Like, I'm like, I hope Are I Are you going to hug him? Like, what do I do? I feel like I know you, but I don't. That's always a weird part about meeting people that we like idolize. It's like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I know you and right. you're a part of my life. And But it's like, do I hug you? You don't know me. Yeah. I, have you thought about that? Maybe that's too much right now. No, I think I'm going to I feel like, yeah, so I, he just had, you know, an idea in his drafts that he had and his team team and my team thought it would be a good idea to you know philly philly got music in there from philly you know just kind of have him on a song so he sent me the draft of that hook and i just kind of you know did my thing on it Mm -hmm. and that's how it really came about i I haven't met friday either though right are you going in for the hug no (laughs) (laughs) what up my guy what's What's going on guy appreciate you (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so the culmination of all of this is you're performing at the Roots Picnic. Yes. Your hometown. That is craziness. That's crazy. Jill Scott is on the lineup. Do you see who is on the lineup? Do you though? see? Wait, <laughs> hold on, pull it up. Pull Wait, it up. We pull Wait, it up. Okay. Pull it up. Because I can't even. I know for a fact. Wayne. Mm-hmm. Wayne on there, y'all. Are you trying to get Wayne the hug and from friends? <laughs> Okay. Uh, not that, from the not way. Right from I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> right. You know, he, he keep yeah, but You're dapping him, right? He's yeah, a little, yeah. He's a dap. <laughs> What's up, my guy? Yeah. <laughs> but, yo, this lineup, as we're pulling it up. They got um, um, Jill Scott, Nas. Nas. Lil Wayne, Backed by the Roots, mm. which is crazy to me. Uh, say it, say it, Victoria say Monet, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Gunna, Black Thought, Method Man, Red Man. Method Man. My guy yeah. Adam Blackstone has put, put him together these fantastic collaborations. Yes. Fantasia, Money Along with Fantasia. Adam. Fantasia. 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 Oh Joe Scott. Fantasia. Right. And you. <laughs> you keep doing that at the end, making it deep. And you. It is deep. You need to sit in these moments, Kenya. I think we're all guilty of that. We're flying by. We're looking for the next thing. I think Big Sean said that. Like, I feel like my life has been this blur, and I haven't been able to, like, hold on to moments. Right. I'm trying to have you hold on here. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to sit in it. I've definitely been trying to really just take it all in. Sexy Red is on here, too. And Tyler. (laughs) (laughs) Sexy Red, Tyler, October London. October London. Wale. Wow, they got really classics on Wale. Wale. And you, girl. And me. I'm on that one. Because, yeah. you know, they, they have a good couple of roots picnic. I've been to a couple, but this lineup, because, you know, last year they just had, you know, Usher. He mm-hmm. was... He, he, and his he leather, ended, he was out there. He killed. He ended it off. He killed that whole performance. He was there. I stayed. Oh, yeah, okay. I stayed. I was going, but I'm like, nah, I gotta stay for Usher. I I thought I was going to leave halfway, but I'm like, it's Usher. You like can't he's killing leave. it. Yeah, he's killing it. I couldn't even, you know, take the eyes away. I couldn't. He was killing every move, but but yeah, like you know, that was the main attraction, Usher. I think. The, uh, I want to say Lauren Hill was Lauren on? was the year before. Oh, the year before? Or the night before. Same yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, so she was around it. So, you know, they had main attractions, but, you know, I feel like all in one, mm-hmm. like these huge major names like that, Lil Wayne, Redman, Wale, Fantasia, Jill Scott, Jill Scott Money, Kenya Vaughn. Yeah. Y'all don't know who that is. Right. So. No, she there. Yeah. <laughs> That's your first perform like live concert performance? Um no, right? No, no, no. I, I think I saw one of the videos on your Instagram. It said like first big concert performance. Festival. Yeah, that was festival. like the first festival. Yeah, that's the first festival I That's what it is. Of. Yeah. Okay. That's the first festival I've performed. Well, look, you're going to be on Lollapalooza, Coachella. We're going to manifest all of they that. They all coming, man. Yes. They all, the summertime about to, you know, sway in. So it's going it's, it's to gonna start getting crazy real fast. Well, thank you for making time. I appreciate you. The EP is out. The honeymoon phase. I'm sure the album will be out soon. But the album, And I know yes. you're thinking about it already. People already calling the EP the album, though. I'm like, That's oh, what I'm saying. There's like what 21 songs on there or something like that. It's like 13. Oh. 13. Check out that. 
<laughs> my god to dress her or something like that no, no. <laughs> she even replayed uh halfway a couple Yo, more times added that on seriously seriously but yeah i mean it i think the quality yeah. is what makes it sound like an album yes Okay. I appreciate that a lot. Just get halfway and put it on the album as well. Like <laughs> put a remix on it, you know, find someone you. and then carry it over. Halfway, I'm gonna listen to that as soon as I leave. That's and play it. Play it at the end, yo, so y'all can get a snip. Yeah, no, you don't yes. got to, but Kenyamon, I appreciate you. What else you got? You wanna talk about anything else? I think I kinda covered everything. Yeah. I think I did yeah, a good just, job. If y'all see me soon locally in y'all um city soon. <laughs> if uh if y'all not here in Philly and uh Thank y'all for supporting me and, you know, me and Say What, of course. And, you know, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> okay, for the wrap-up, <laughs> Kenya Vaughn here on the Mean House podcast. It's Mean Say What. Thank you for watching.